that with my partner, Annie had a shop called El Dica in the street, a bit further up. It was a little shop. Yeah. Uh, and we thought we were going to have a baby, and we thought, right, let's get a bigger shop, get more records in, and we can get a cot out the back for the baby, so she can be in the shop. That's what we've done, that's why we've come here. Um, so, yeah, she's come up to six years, so, yeah, we've had the shop for six years here. Because that's my partner's grandmother's name. And she came from Trinidad in, I think, 1948. Was into music, was into dancing and having a good time. And that's kind of how the shop came about. And he started the shop up as, like, you know, respect to her and her memory. And stuff. I grew up collecting records in, like, the mid 80s when there was record shops on every corner. Um, you know, there was every town had like three or four record shops, and it was so much fun going around all these different record shops, just looking for records and breaks and beats and stuff. And that's what we kind of wanted to recreate here. Um, you know, an old style record shop, not a, not you know, no wooden floors, no you know, none of you know, none of that kind of you know, like an old down to earth, like family run record store. And we stock soul, reggae, jazz, funk, hip hop, calypso, African, no house music, and all collectible records. Not, you know. Okay, well I'm um, I'm a bit of a James Brown freak. I saw James Brown in 1985. So I could give you a top ten of James Brown. Probably yeah. the first one to be uh, get up, get into it, get involved. Of the break, um, you know, that was an old, old rapper's break. Um, soul power, you got the habit, you need it. Give it to me. funky drummer, of course. Which had a 45 back in the day with the breaks on the end of side two. Um, what else? What else? James Brown tracks, good James Brown tracks. In the middle, of course. In the middle, yeah, because they've just covered it. Um, these are the, these are the heliocentrics over there. Oh, so they've just really? covered it. They've oh. just covered it with um, Orlando you, Julius. I have like a few of the records. Well, you want to hear the new one? They've just done an album with Orlando we'll Julius, an African guy, like and, and um, done another version yeah. in the middle. James Brown, D. Realist track. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, what else? They're doing like, with, like rap rappers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do with Ghost. Yeah. Like, that's like Killer, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're signed to um, yeah, yeah. Stone's Throw. <laughs> They got yeah, like yeah, a yeah. record, which is like Oh No remix or something yeah, on them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like really, really sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, Adrian. I used to go to school with Adrian. But, um, basically, he was my record digging partner. You know, we used to save up our pocket money and go for all the breaks and beats in the shops and the record and stuff when we were like 15, 16 years old. We were in 84, 85. We used to listen to Tim Westwood on the radio. It was on ALWR. They used to play these amazing mixes of like all the old Bronx DJs cutting up breaks. And we wanted to find all the breaks. And then obviously, when they started sampling, hip hop records started sampling, we wanted to find the samples. You know, and we kind of started listening more to the old music rather than the hip hop, really. And we had to, well, we shared turntables, we bought one each. So he'd bring a turntable around my house so we could have a little, and he had a mixer, I didn't have a mixer. Um, so we'd share it, and we were like a DJ team back in the day. And he picked up the guitar, started playing guitar, and yeah, now he's in the Helix and I'm still selling records in a record shop. So.